so yeah, welcome everyone to this uh, showcase here. So I think the key message, or actually this entire event, is CPaaS acceleration. And we take the word acceleration literally in here because we talked about in the presentation that I had done yesterday that we need to have uh, applications and solutions that are built on very complex technology, but the application development itself should be quick, as quick as possible, because you need that rapid innovation to occur, abstract the complexity, uh, and be able to deliver those applications. I think the areas we had talked about was programmable communications, which is sort of the traditional CPaaS. That's basic calling, messaging, all the combinations of that. But when then combined with conversational AI and computer vision and machine vision AI with models that can be used together with programmable networks and then possibly deployed on 5G, but not necessarily they could be deployed on, on essentially any, <coughs> any, any enterprise network. So for this <coughs> demonstration, what I'm going to do is uh, use our own platform uh, depicted in the center here, Engage Digital uh, platform, which is a design and development platform. So it allows the ourselves and our partners and customers or developers that use a platform to create applications using simple APIs, SDKs, and, uh, and when we say no code, low code, we literally mean no code. So this exact demo I'm going to show you is literally no code, the zero lines of code. And it's a very complex computer vision application that you'll see. Um, so many different applications can be created. The one on the bottom left-hand side is the, is the one I'm going to do a quick uh, demonstration on. But before I kind of get to that, We'll kind of show the different ways that the platform is being used. So no code is on, on the top left-hand side. All of the capabilities of the platform are available through a set of REST APIs. Uh, and there's SDKs uh, we provide for web, uh, web integration, SDKs for Android, and SDKs for iOS as well. And the amount of devices that can be connected are, as you can see on the left-hand side, is independent or agnostics of the endpoint, PSTN, SIP endpoints, Android, iOS phones. Um, or IoT devices, including cameras and sensors and microphones. So regardless of the endpoint, regardless of the access network, the application, once built, can then be deployed in a variety of those combinations without having to rewrite any of the application or the code or the visual design tool behind it. Um, now, because this, this particular demo is going to be around computer vision use case, um, what we're going to show you is there's a, a very large number of pre-built computer vision models already into the platform. I think that's a complexity with uh, computer vision and AI and machine learning in general. How do, you how do you design the model? And it takes so much data and so much tuning before the model is even available. What we're doing is we're aggregating and continuing to add uh, and l literally now we have hundreds of pre-built models. This is a small representation of that. So the designer can simply drag and drop, and I'll show you that in a second, how uh, to create a com complete application by just uh, selecting the, um, selecting the um, model that you want, drag it into a flow, connect what you want your application to do, and then run, and then deploy the application. Um, as you can see, these, compu uh, these computer vision models can be applied to many, many different dis industry verticals for security, surveillance, entertainment, healthcare, you know, in university educations, entertainment venues, uh, industry 4.0 verticals, uh, exactly, because these models are fairly generic in that sense, that they're doing face recognition, object identification, motion identification. In a particular area, this is a zone where no object should traverse, so if anything moves in this zone, it will, be, it will be picked up by, um, it's an unattended object, for instance. So many of these models are built, and further tuning or creating new models also is part of the platform. Somebody says, well, I want something a little bit more unique than this. Then we say, okay, let's get the data set for that, a few pictures, a few videos, and we'll just use that to retrain and update or, or create a new model. Um, so the, the platform, as I, as I mentioned earlier, comes with a set of SDKs and APIs. So this is going to be the actual uh, uh, demo that we're, gonna, we're going to run. So we're going to create a, a video analytics flow, uh, and we want to take a video stream from an outdoor location depicted on the, in the picture there. What we want to do is select which cameras, because in that facility there might be multiple cameras, right? We'll say, okay, in this example, we'll just take one camera, but the click of a button, you can say, if there's 20 cameras, just add them to the list. All of those cameras then will say, we want to apply in the middle here, the inferencing or the analytics part. What are we looking for in that video feed? So in this simple example, we're gonna say, okay, if, there, if there's fire, flame, or smoke detected in that scene, then we want to do some alerting and communication. It's not enough to say, okay, well, you detected a fire, make a recording. No, no, this is urgent. People need to be notified, people need to be called, people need to view what's actually happening in real time, in sight, at, at that location there. 
So that's the communications aspect of it, right? It builds on top of the communications infrastructure because the alerting mechanism needs to be part of the application. So you set up the alerts and we activate the, activate the monitoring service. The amount of things that you can be looking from the scene could be many. You just click and add and drop those things to it. For example, if there's people loitering around that area, that's a restricted area, people should not be there. If there's animals jumping over the fence, that might be some other security hazard risk. We'll identify, okay, there's animals jumping over there. So you just click and drag and add that to your inference engine, and you say, okay, now go, now go, run, that, now go run that flow. So similarly, there, there's other, we won't get to this one, but similarly, video feed will count how many people are on a given street. There's actually a, a video recording of a street in Japan. If there's ever more than 10 people, then alert somebody because there's a congestion a, a situation occurring or more than 100 people or whatever you know, the, the case may be. So it's just kind of showing that through simple drag and drop configuring thing, many of these complex use cases can be built and deployed and, and many of the cases actually using no code at all. So let me just quickly now jump to our web portal screen here and let's look at the flow that, um, uh, let's look at the flow for the uh, fire, fire detection part of it. Okay, fire detection, I'm going to go and, um, okay, so here, here's the entire application, as you can see how easy and simple that is. Uh, this is completely visual, visual design tool, drag and drop, no code, and literally I mean no code. So you'll get all the widgets that appear on, on the left hand side, you simply detect and drop them here, and then through this thing, you can go and configure what that thing. So what this is saying is take the camera feed here and apply this video inferencing to it. In this case, it says fire. Now, this engine can go and provide many different, I'm not sure if you can really see from that far away on the bottom right-hand corner, there's a long list of all these pre-built models that are there. So you simply click and use any of those, any of those models as part of, the, uh, as part of the design application. In this case, we just we selected fire just for the purpose of this demo here. But you could go and free to add more cameras, add more complex flows in here, connect them. Now once the fire is detected, what you do is clone the media packet, make a recording of that, make a, make a recording of the event when that, when that actual event occurred. But more importantly, we want to notify and alert somebody. I, I want to have somebody immediately called on a phone who's a facilities manager. They will get the phone and identify which camera it is or call multiple people at the same time and put them on a conference bridge and show them the live feed because somebody might be from the fire department, might be facilities manager, it might be some government official to, to show them. So the imagination is really up to the developer and they will literally just use the design tool to make the business logic as, uh, as sophisticated or as simple as, as they need to make it. So with that, uh, what I'm going to do is going to go and run this flow now. Uh, so go to this pipeline. And then Al's going to set his hair on fire in the back? Is that, uh... <laughs> <laughs> now, because starting an actual fire and feeding that into it, I might get arrested. So what we had to do was take a recording of a video clip and feed that instead of a camera feeding, camera feeding the, the, the video stream into it. So here's a clip uh, with, the, um, with the camera. Um, okay, so I'm going to say go start this, and let's watch. Let's watch this flow as it as it shows up in here. Okay, so it's an RTSP stream in this case, and I'm going to go and watch it now in real time. So that stream is coming in real time now, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, but you will see after a few seconds, right in the center of that thing, you'll see a flame appear, and it'll have a green bounded box around it, because it's detected that in real time. And what it's going to do is call my cell phone, and my cell phone will start ringing, and it will tell me what actually, uh, what actually happened. So now I see the fire started there. Hopefully you can see that in the screen there. Fire is detected, and now somebody needs to get alerted. That's what people probably can hear. I'm going to answer it. Put a speakerphone. This is the alert message from Madison Engage Digital Platform. Fire is detected on site. Please alert your neighbors. Please alert your neighbors. Please investigate. I think you heard that, right? Yeah. Okay. That's uh, a very modern so, fire alarm. Yeah. <laughs> so we yeah, have very low. And so just one last thing was that, yeah, and then uh, won't maybe go through that, just kind of run out of time. But as part of this, an email actually went out to my account because I configured the, the type of things that I wanted to detect simply by entering what type of actions do I want taken uh, based, on the, uh, based on the use case that, I, you know, that somebody had, had, had developed. So that, thank you. Excellent. Yeah.
to the judges. I've got a couple of questions. So um, does this require a particular set of uh, video cameras or a particular set of uh, interface for it to, to connect? Yeah, good question, actually. So basically, any the cheapest of the cheapest $20, $50 camera will work. And in some cases, very sophisticated on WIF cameras can be, it will be supported depending on you know, what the need for the camera is, the number, amount of resolution. In terms of interfaces, all 100% standardized interfaces, HLS, RTSP, HTTP streams. Video frame rates can be adjusted because maybe you don't need to be sending 30 frames a second, burning a bunch of bandwidth. You still get five frames per second is enough for this application. All of that stuff is configurable and it's all standard off the shelf. And what's the minimum uh, frame resolution for the detection algorithms to be able to be consistently? Yeah, it will depend. I mean, if you're doing something that needs a much more accuracy, like face recognition is crucial, you'll probably want more, set the cameras and the application with a higher resolution. Some things don't require maybe that resolution, so you don't want to maybe necessarily burn too much bandwidth. So those are trade-offs in terms of how much bandwidth you have uh, and what level of accuracy you're looking for so based on that, you will determine what resolution. In this particular case, we were just running 720p, uh, 720p video. Okay. It might have actually been okay with 480p as well, but this happens to be running 720p. And does the system detect anomalies like a camera being blocked or a static picture being put in front of the camera? Yeah, absolutely good question. I actually brought that up, exactly. So we'll do all kinds of anomaly detection too. If the camera is not detecting anything for some period of time, the application could say, this is, this is the recognition I want to do. There's a separate action associated with that. Not call the IT or the, or the uh, company that's providing the service to alert them, something's blocking the camera. Uh, versus maybe somebody who is going and deliberately doing something to it and disconnecting and will go and detect that. That there's no connectivity and also loss of connectivity. How about if the angle of the camera is changed? So there is still feed, but the wrong angle. Oh, yeah, good point. So it can say that this is the image that the camera is looking at, that, that becomes the base or reference image. Okay, so, so there is The a base and reference scene. image must still stay the same, but if the base or reference image changes, that's also an anomaly, and that anomaly can get reported too. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Who is your typical customer for this? So we have customers in, in, a, in a number of different industry vertical segments. So there are uh, customers who are in industrial automation from a uh, warehouse, warehouse automation. So just imagine this case was a fire, but they would imagine now an assembly line with boxes rolling. And they said, well, if these boxes are rolling, we need to identify which boxes were tagged red or green, and they have a lot of manual labor going and doing this and sorting through this stuff. And also the staff that are working at that facility, they want to say, well, if any staff in that where a very large warehouse facility, if they're not wearing a proper hat and their jacket, then they, then they actually then they actually go and alert that hey, there's, there's there are people here that are that are not wearing the proper uh, protective equipment, or if they identify a person, this is a person that is not authorized to be this area. So it's a combination of multiple things, not just. Imp object identification, but people management aspects, too, depending on what the customers want to, want to do. So there's different industry vertical segments. Some are in okay. uh, security and surveillance. Some are in industrial for automation use cases. Excellent.